Hey, what's up guys? Papin with you here once again. I hope everyone had an awesome weekend. Uh, now we're back to the grind. The weekday, day-to-day -day grind we go through, right? Uh, and what a better way to start it than playing some Rival Kingdoms. Actually, we're not going to be exactly uh, playing the game per se, but I wanted to go over um, a few things about the game with you guys, okay? Because I've noticed uh, recently while I'm doing my, my regular raids on a daily basis that there seems to be a lot of misuse of uh, certain defenses and troops as well, okay? So we'll do a little quick um, kind of overview of what everything is and what it does. And then uh, on, a, on a later video, I'll show you guys all about the ancients uh, as, and what they do specifically as well, okay? Now, the first thing that I'm not, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of, okay, is uh, we have this nice little tool in the game, okay, that shows us exactly on the, on the lower left-hand side there, it looks like a little eye, that thing that looks like a little eye there, uh, that shows us exactly the coverage uh, of the defenses, okay? So as you can see here, my base is pretty much covered. Uh, every defense is covering the other defense, and most of the base is covered as well, okay? Now, that's not to say that is impenetrable, okay? It's just to say that everything is pretty much backed up but obviously with the right uh, attack strategy, this base can be defeated and it has, okay? So that's what that looks like, okay? Now, briefly to show you, uh, for example, my watchtowers, they're at level seven, okay? And they, they, they cost a nice amount of damage, okay? And uh, they attack uh, ground units as well as air units, okay? So I have two of them and I have one covering the other okay now we have the sky watcher as well and the sky watcher is just strictly shoots at anything that's up in the air we're talking dragons we're talking mana hunters okay then we have a catapults okay a catapults uh cover a lot a lot of ground and it causes some uh pretty damaging splash damage okay now the troops that are most damaged by the splash splash damage sorry is the um the wardens okay the wardens uh could be could be destroyed pretty quickly by by a few of those blasts from the catapult okay it's happened to me many a time sometimes i kind of forget all about it next thing you know your wardens are dead okay and uh we have the spell towers now the spell towers you assign an en an ancient to them okay and it has a certain effect on whatever troops are, are attacking the base that come within that radius you see right there. So you can see we have two spell towers and these are at level five, okay? I have Solric um, assigned to one of them and I have Nyrax assigned to the other, okay? My stronghold right now is at level eight, okay? And at level eight, I'm starting to figure out that these guys that are up here, they're, they're getting stronger and stronger, okay? And my base does get attacked a lot, and most of these guys are succeeding. Uh, not, not more so because of the, the design of the base, but basically uh, my defenses are just not up to par yet with my stronghold, okay? Now, that's one of the main problems uh, with, uh, with going up a stronghold and keeping your defenses down, okay? But I'm working on that as we speak. Uh, as you can see, I'm even, I'm even upgrading my, um, my maulers right now. So little by little, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting everything up to par, okay? Now there's one structure in specific that I wanted to speak about today because I've noticed that a lot of people take this thing right here, which is called the Primus Conduit, okay? And they take it, and they put it somewhere over here, okay? They put it way outside of the base. It's not connected to anything, okay? It does absolutely nothing, okay? Now, that's just a waste of gold. It's a waste of good strategy. It's an absolute waste of an excellent building, okay? Because this building, I'll show you guys right now what it does, okay? Uh, let me give you an example. 
For example, this catapult, right? Normal catapult, level 5. You can see that the damage per second it does is 6.48 plus 108, okay? Now we take that same catapult, the same level, and we connect it to the Primus Conduit, okay? And you can see the upgrade on the damage there, okay? 7.78 plus 3.11 okay now we see that against that okay there's a big difference guys okay it's a big difference so if you have the conduit make sure that you place it inside your base and make sure you connect as many defense as you can connect to it okay because it's only going to benefit your defense okay the sky watcher is also connected to the primus conduit and you can see the damage it does there and on the other side when it's not connected you can see that the damage goes down considerably okay the watchtowers the same thing these watchtowers that are connected to the primus conduit do a lot more damage than these watchtowers that are not connected to the Primus Conduit, and you see that the difference is uh, a, a, a few points, and trust me, that does uh, quite a bit of difference during an attack, okay, while you're defending your base, okay? Now, as far as the way you want to you wanna arrange them, okay, now, uh, for a lot of you guys that are coming over from Clash of Clans, uh, you already know what, what, what or how you're supposed to to uh, place your defenses right one covers the other etc etc okay but i would never uh even dream of telling someone exactly how to do their base okay all i can do is is show you my base and and show you what all the defenses do and then you can take it from there okay maybe at a later date i can do a video with some base builds uh, and things of that nature and we can get down a bit of that, okay? But for now, uh, you know, just do the best you can with your base. Remember that the catapults cover the most range, okay? And then make sure that one base covers the other, okay? And you guys should be okay. Now, as far as the troops, uh, for those of you guys that are not uh, too much well aware of what the troops do, okay, just very briefly, the the soldiers are the, the troop with the, that cost the most damage in the game, okay, and they have a health of 120, the damage per second is 31.68. Now, their main weakness, okay, is... Um, it's the spell towers, okay? Magic. They're magic, okay? So just keep in mind when you're attacking. The wardens, okay? The wardens don't have a lot of health, okay? That's why the splash damage is so much danger for them, okay? But you can see that the damage per second is pretty good as well, okay? And like I said, uh, their main weakness is splash damage, okay? Now we have the mana hunters, which I do not use a lot. But um, I guess it can be pretty useful depending on what you're trying to do, okay? You can see the health is more or less that of a warden, okay? But their damage per second, okay, is a lot, a lot weaker, okay? And obviously, uh, you know, air defenses can, can take them out pretty quickly, all right? And also, the benefit of the mana hunters are that they do provide one extra mana uh, every time they, they knock a building down, okay? And the maulers, they have the most health, okay? And the damage per second isn't that bad, but their damage goes up by 300% when we're talking about wall damage, okay? So these would be like your wall breakers, and then they go straight towards the defenses, and that's their forte, that's what they do, okay? And the paladins, they have a health of 190, and their damage per second is not that high, okay? But nearby allies uh, do gain passive health, uh, with the presses of the paladins and it stacks up uh, the more paladins you have or the health regeneration is for the rest of your troops okay so basically the other two um, the raiders and the magi I have not unlocked those yet uh, I have quite a bit uh, to go before I get those guys but uh, for now I, I thought it would be important for you guys to to see 
um, how the defenses work more or less and what you can do to benefit from the defenses, okay? Now, also, uh, the one thing I would be remiss if I, if I didn't tell you guys that uh, a lot of times you see a lot of people also put these portals, okay? They put them outside the base, okay, where, they, where, where they're um, easily reachable, okay? And what this does is you're just giving away free mana. Okay, you're giving away free mana to your attacker. That way he doesn't have to spend any troops uh, and he doesn't have to take any damage from your defenses if you put in your portals all the way outside of your base where they are not covered by any defenses at all. Okay, now for example, this one that's right here in this corner, uh, somebody might come, might, uh, might be able to come and snipe it uh, and, and knock it down before it can get any damage. Uh, especially like let's say a dragon okay but uh they cannot go much further than that okay uh the point is not to have them all stacked up in one place or all of them outside of the base and then there they're not helping you at all and all they're doing is uh you all you're doing is gifting mana to your attackers okay so please keep that in mind as well as you're building your base okay guys now that's pretty much it for this video guys i uh, just wanted to cover that very quickly uh please like and subscribe and i wanted to remind you guys that tomorrow uh for the next couple of days i'm gonna be giving away some promo codes uh so i hope you guys can take advantage of that and don't forget when we're attacking in rival kingdoms we go hard or we don't go at all see ya